There's an ancient Arabic legend about a shapeshifter that can take the form of any animal. They can also appear as a living column of smoke or dust, or a giant human, and have been known to live trapped in a bottle. Jinn are genies, ancient creatures believed to occupy the space between celestial and terrestrial worlds. Not quite monsters, not quite humans, and not quite celestial beings, the jinn are something different. But for many people, the genie is just some guy in a lamp who can give you three wishes. A way for you to get what you want without having to work for it. Not only is that not even close to the original versions of the jinn, it dismisses the immense power these beings possess. The jinn are a species all their own, more powerful than humans, and more meaningful than pop culture would have us believe. I'm Dr. Emily Zarka, and this is Monstrum. Crafted from prehistoric fires long before humans, jinn are neither wholly earthly nor wholly spiritual. They require food to live, are subject to lust and other human passions, and can die, although they live naturally for thousands of years. Jinn can see humans and interfere in their lives. Humans can only see a genie if it takes a form that allows itself to be seen, which is rare. They can move through walls and travel great distances quickly, shape-shifting into all kinds of animals and can appear as smoke. Sometimes the appearance of a genie is preceded by an earthquake or a storm. In ancient Arabic cultures, jinn were worshipped for their capacity to make legendary weapons and supposed ability to encourage fertile crops. These pre-Islamic accounts of jinn also claimed a genie could take on a human form and have children with them. These offspring were often seers who could communicate with their jinn relatives as well as with the divine. These half-jinn children were advisors and consultants of religious matters. They helped find lost animals, gave and removed curses, and settled personal disputes. Islamic narratives heavily influence the perception of jinn and their characteristics. The Quran explicitly mentions there are three types of spiritual beings, angels, demons, and jinn. That text also states jinn were created before humans and are intelligent beings with free will, formed from smokeless fire and scorching winds. In Islamic tradition, people made from clay occupy the material realm of earth, while angels occupy the celestial realm of light. It's said that jinn reside in a realm between the material and celestial, called the intermediate realm. A particular story in the Quran tells of an encounter between the Prophet Muhammad and a crowd of jinn. This tale describes the jinn as men, tall as lances, completely wrapped in their mantles from their feet up, who seem to be composed of blackness. Interestingly, the 55th chapter of the Quran is written in dual form for both humans and jinn. It describes jinn as practitioners of religion, including Islam, who are believed to have the same religious responsibilities as humans. Medieval Muslim scholars believe the jinn were susceptible to fiery temperaments because they were composed of fire. So jinn could either be good or evil. The evil jinn were said to enter into the bodies of humans, causing madness, injury, or death, an idea that pre-Islamic communities shared as well. Human and jinn interactions weren't always negative. Stories of love affairs between jinn and humans were popular in the medieval period. One of the most famous interactions between jinn and humans occur in one of the world's most popular texts, The Thousand and One Nights. Scholars argue the famous collection of stories takes its inspiration from a number of sources, including Indo-Persian and Greek traditions, as well as Arabic Islamic ones. One thing for certain is that although a 9th century fragment and a 14th century manuscript of the Thousand and One Nights have been found, there is still no conclusive source. Since jinn figure heavily in various stories, we can assume that some aspects of these creatures exist across many cultural histories. With each translation and variation of the text, older and newer tales were added and subtracted regularly, but the jinn appear in all known editions. One significant story in the collection is the story of the fisherman. In it, an old man slogs through a hard day of work with nothing to show for it. After casting his net many times, he draws up a bottle of brass with a heavy lead stopper stamped with the seal of a dead sultan. When he opens the bottle, a plume of smoke rises up and condenses into the form of a massive Yifrit, an evil genie, so big his head is inside the clouds. At first, the genie, having been trapped in the bottle for 1,800 years, wants to kill the fisherman. But the old fisherman is clever. He challenges the genie to show him how it was possible for such a magnificent, powerful being to fit in such a small vessel. 
Apparently very vain, the genie turns back into smoke and enters the bottle little by little until the fishermen can seal it up, once again trapping the genie. After some negotiation, the two come to a compromise. If the fisherman releases him, the genie will not only let the fisherman live, but will grant him one service. Once freed, the genie leads the man to a hidden lake in the desert, where he is able to capture the most exquisitely colored fish. The rare fish make the fisherman a very prosperous man. Another important tale is the story of the merchant and the genie. This version tells the story of a merchant who rests under a tree eating dates when he carelessly tosses a pit aside. An angry genie appears, sword drawn, claiming the pit had struck and killed his son. Remember, genie cannot be seen by humans in their natural form. Before he slays the man, he agrees to give the merchant a year to get his affairs in order. A year passes and the merchant returns to the same spot under the tree and awaits his death. While sitting there, three sheikhs stumble upon him one by one, each deciding to wait with the doomed man. When the genie finally appears, the sheikhs strike a bargain. They will each tell the entity a story. If one of the stories pleases the genie, he will relinquish one third of his claim on the merchant's life. Luckily, each story impresses the genie and the merchant survives. In the early 18th century, Antoine Galland, a French archaeologist and scholar, was the first person to translate the Arabic collection into a European language. He procured a three or four volume manuscript from the eastern Mediterranean region of Levant, dated between the 14th and 15th century. The translation of these volumes became a 12 volume series, published between 1704 to 1717 under the title The Thousand and One Nights, Arab Stories Translated into French. Despite containing only 280 nights, the series was a hit. For nearly a century, this version became the main text for subsequent translations, and ironically, in 1814, Galland's French text was translated back to Arabic, while the original Arabic source faded into obscurity. Besides becoming the most commonly translated version for many years, Galland's text gave the world something else, the stories of Aladdin and Alibaba, he added these to the collection from oral versions reportedly told to him by a monk from Syria. Both stories have no direct Arabic source. The title Arabian Nights Entertainments was first given to the Thousand and One Nights collection by an anonymous Grub Street English translator of Gallen's version in 1706. Arguably, part of the reason all the versions of the Thousand and One Nights became instant sensations is because Europeans hoped to gain some insight into the lands they had colonized. Despite being sensationalized and exaggerated to say the least, the stories were seen as a window into foreign cultures. In 1840, Edward William Lane published the first direct Arabic to English edition based on an Egyptian version of stories. At Lane's request, this Arabic version was corrected and annotated by Sheikh Mohammed al-Tantawi, who helped translate the challenging Middle Arabic words for more easy conversion to English. Lane's version also included detailed research notes on Arabic culture as well as illustrations. In some Islamic traditions today, the jinn are said to still roam the earth hidden from humans. And among some people, it is believed that jinn are the cause of mental illness. Hallucinations, epilepsy, and other conditions are said to be the work of jinn. When one considers that jinn are part of Muslim religious tradition, it's understandable that people would think this. Much in the same way other religions conceptualize demonic possession, a genie occupying a human's body is one explanation for seemingly uncontrollable behavior. The word genie is an Anglicanized version of the French word first used by Galland in 1706, a term itself borrowed from the Latin word genius, referencing a supernatural guardian spirit. The first reference of the genie granting three wishes also appeared in Galland's text, in his rendition of the story of the fisherman. In that story, the genie explains that he initially thought about granting the person who freed him from the bottle three demands every day. Since then, the three demands or wishes have become a common gin trope, even appearing the first time a genie appears in film. The iconic genie portrayed by Robin Williams in Disney's 1992 Aladdin is a hybrid of all these iterations. 10,000 years will give you such a crick in the neck. However, this time the genie retains some control over the three wishes he must grant, giving Aladdin stipulations, including that he cannot wish for more wishes. Three wishes to be exact and ixnay on the wishing for more wishes. From spiritual being to comical cartoon, that's quite a journey. Jinn have shown up in traditions and stories since the pre-Islamic Arabic world. 
but it wasn't until a few stories were translated in the 18th century that these beings were popularized. They're more than just some blue guy trapped in a lamp who grants wishes. They're powerful intellectual entities whose stories are woven into ancient Islamic culture. And yes, also capable of changing the direction of your life in an instant. In an instant. I'm not killing it with the snaps.